Hi everybody, it's Mary back again from Midpoint Libraries for Virtual Storytime. Are you ready? Let's go. If you're ready for a story, wave hello. If you're ready for a story, wave hello. If you're ready for a story and you want us all to know, if you're ready for a story, wave hello. Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm so glad you're here to share some stories with me. I picked out two today, especially for this week. All right, so um, let's get right into it. Our first book, I have to bend over and pick it up. Our first book is called The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. Do you see this gold symbol here? Do you remember what that means? That means that this book won the Caldecott Medal. That means that of all the books for kids that were published in the United States the year that this book came out, this one is the absolute best for its pictures. All right. So this is uh, The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats, and it comes to us from Puffin Books. I think you're going to like this a lot. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, 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 his feet sank in the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. And then he walked with his toes pointing in like this. Oh, that's fun to do. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. That's fun. It was a stick that he found. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop, right on top of Peter's head. I think he continued walking. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. So, he made a smiling snowman, and he made angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great big tall heaping mountain of snow and slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another. He packed it round and firm made a snowball, and he put that snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into the warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and he thought and he thought about them, about his adventures. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. Do you remember that he put the snowball there? He looked in his pocket, but his pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone, and the snow was still everywhere. New snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. Aren't those cool looking snowflakes? I like that one. So this book came out a very long time ago. I'm gonna tell you that this book came out 60 years ago. Mm-hmm, that's even before I was born. It was a very long time ago, and again, it got the Caldecott Medal because for kids, this was the best picture book of the year. That's important. We're going to come back to that in a minute. But let's take a break for a song. It's been a long while since we had a shaker song, 
And, you know, a lot of times I use those little eggs that we have here at the library that have shaker sounds in them. But if you're sitting at home and you're watching, you probably don't have a shaker egg like we have at the library. So I wonder if you have one that you have made by yourself. And if you haven't made one, you can. For this, I used an old Powerade bottle. I made sure that it was all the way dry. It took a couple days to make sure it was dry. And then I put some rice into it. And listen to this. It makes a shaker sound. So if you have a shaker of some sort, you can go ahead and get that now. Or if you don't have one, we'll just all pretend, okay? So we're gonna sing a song about shake, uh, with our shaker eggs. You ready? Not even an egg, I still call it that. Shake your shaker in the air. Shake it here, shake it there. Shake your shaker in the air. Shake your shaker. Shake it fast and shake it slow. Shake it stop and shake it go. Shake your shaker fast and slow. Shake your shaker. You ready? Let's do another one. Shake it near and shake it far. Drive your shaker like a car. Shake it near and shake it far. Shake your shaker. Silly little shaker song. I like this. So I have another book for you. This one is called The Family Book, and it's from our friend Todd Parr. He did the pictures and the words. And um, I think as we read this book, you'll probably find a family that looks like your family. And you might find a family that looks a little different, but looks like your friend's family. Or you might find a family that looks like no family you know, but they're a family. So this is the family book from Todd Parr, and this comes from Megan Tinsley Books, which is part of Little Brown. All right. <clears throat> Some families are big, some families are small. Some families are the same color, some families are different colors. All families like to hug each other. Some families live near each other. Some families live very far from each other. Some families look alike. Some families look like their pets. All families are sad when they lose someone they love. Some families have a stepmom or stepdad or stepbrothers or stepsisters. Some families adopt children. Some families have two moms or two dads. Some families have one parent instead of two. All families like to celebrate special days together. Some families eat the same things. Some families eat different things. Some families like to be quiet. Some families like to be noisy! I bet you can guess which one of those families I'm in. <laughs> Some families like to be clean. Some families like to be messy. Some families live in a house by themselves. Some families share a house with other families. All families can help each other be strong. There are lots of different ways to be a family. Your family is special no matter what kind it is. Love, Todd. That's the family book. So usually, at the beginning of our story time, I tell you what our theme is. Like a couple weeks ago, I said, we're going to talk about dogs. But 
today I didn't tell you the theme at the beginning. And that's because this week at the library, um, all libraries throughout the United States, this is what we call Banned and Challenged Books Week. And it's a time when we look at, we take a second look at our books and say, hmm, some people think we shouldn't have that book in our library. Should we really have it? And chances are good that our library is going to keep it. Because the important thing about libraries is that we have something for everybody. Now, there are books at our library that I love, and I read over and over and over again. And there are some books at our library that I do not like. And that's okay, because that's my opinion. And I'll bet the grown-ups in your life have books that they like a lot, and some books that they do not like and they do not want to read. But one of the things that we talk about this week, Banned and Challenged Books Week, is when sometimes somebody says, I don't like that book, and I don't think that anybody should be allowed to read it. And that's something that as a library, we don't really agree with. And that's not just the library that I work for, that's all libraries. Because we want to make sure that everybody can find something that they want. So why did I choose these two books? This book, The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats, that has, that was won the highest award there is, a lot of people challenged this book and said, this book should not be in the library. Do you remember what there was in this book that was upsetting to people? Well, I'm going to tell you what it was. And I think you're, you will probably be surprised. Do you see Peter? That's the boy in this book. Do you see his skin? You see his mom's skin? Their skin's brown, right? Peter and his mom are African-American people. And Ezra Jack Keats, who wrote this book, is not African-American. He looks a lot more like me than he looks like Peter. And a lot of people, back when this book came out 60 years ago, thought that that was wrong. And they said, oh, we shouldn't have that book. I don't think that's a very good reason not to have a book, but whatever. The family book. Remember I said you're going to find families in this book that look like your family, and you're going to find families that look like your friends, or maybe families you don't know at all? There are a lot of people, well, maybe not a lot, but there are some people who think that this book should not be out there for kids because it shows families that are different and different from that person's family. So for instance, in my family, we all pretty much look alike. We all live in one house. And so we were mentioned in this book. And um, I have friends, I have relatives, who have only one parent in their family. And there are some folks who think that that shouldn't be. And I have friends and family, and I'll bet you have friends too, who um, might have two moms or two dads, or might have adopted children, or other situations like that. And there are some folks who think that books that show that kind of life should not be in libraries for kids. So we have those books. And it's important that we have those books because it's important that every person be able to see themselves in a book, right? So I said, I'll bet you can see yourself. You can see your family in this book. And it's important that everybody be able to see themselves in a book. So if I am a lady who lives in Ohio and works in a library, it's important that I see a book about a lady who lives in Ohio and works in a library. And if you're a child who uses a wheelchair, it's important that we have books about children who use wheelchairs. And if you are a person who has two moms or two dads, if you are a person who has one mom or one dad, I think it's important that you find a book that shows who you are, you know? And having books about somebody who um, uses a wheelchair or has two dads or lives in a different kind of house or has a different color skin. That might not be the right book for you, but it's the right book for somebody else. And so it's important for us to have those books for all the people who want to see themselves. And hey kids, that was a whole lot of talking and not a lot of pictures, huh?
but that's why we have this. That's why we have our Band and Challenged Book Week. Okay, that's enough of that lecture. What do you say we sing our goodbye song and we go off and do something and what should our activity be today? Let's read a book we've never read before. Find a new book you have never read before. That's your goal, okay? You might find yourself in that book. You might find somebody else who you can learn about. All right, are you ready? Time to say goodbye. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear. Wave goodbye, butterfly. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody.